What's he doing? He's on Trophy Manager. Oh my god. It's a Trophy Manager video. What's he playing at? <laughs> What's going on guys, my name is George or the Real Wolfie and welcome to the 14th TM Weekly Update. Guys, I haven't done one of these for so long because I had had some mad headphone problems which have finally been sorted. I've finally got working headphones even though they're really, really quiet so you might want to turn your uh, volume up. I've put it as high as I can for this video so if it's not loud enough just turn your volume up or something like that. But yeah, we are back on Trophy Manager, and we have 31 games to get through in this episode, so it's going to be mega... No, I don't want to restart my computer. There we go, anyway, that that just helps us out on the video, that's just brilliant. But anyway, there are going to be 31 games in this episode, I'm going to rush through it like an absolute madman, and yeah, let's just get started, first of all, with what has gone on in the league. So nine games ago on the 13th of March, we had a league match away against Vencebas FC. And this was a pretty important game for us to go win out of because they were below us in the relegation playoffs and we were just outside. There were loads of clubs on 17 points as we were. So this was a crucial game for us to get something out of. And trust us, we went and cocked it up and lost 3-2, which I was annoyed about. But Norland managed to score on his return to the team and Johnson also managed to get a game, which was quite good to see. Then, the next match, this was eight games ago, remember guys, we played Newton Heath LYR at home, and this was, again, another crucial game to get something out of. Now, they were about 17th, I think, out of 18 teams in our league when we played this match. So, obviously, I was expecting something pretty good. Our teams, he had a lot of three-star players, and even a few uh, two, two-and-a-half-star players, uh, players on his team so it wasn't the best of teams I was up against whereas ours is a lot stronger than his was we went into that game and came out with a 5-0 win Samson grabbing two Eddie Hill who's one of our new players which I will just show you now there he is he grabbed two goals as did Ludlow so as you can see Eddie Hill he's a pretty good player six point uh, three point six rated so he might become four star before he stops blooming but I'm not quite sure Good player, good to stats for an offensive mid, and has scored two goals in five games for us so far. We signed him for 17.6 million. Then we played Nordtown CFC, and uh, Eddie Hill played in that game again. And this game, I didn't really expect anyone to do well in, because it was a match against top of the league when we played them. Obviously, six games, I think, have gone on since then. So, obviously, they're now... Uh, they're now not top of the league because stuff has changed but when we played them they were comfortably top of the league so obviously we didn't expect much however what happened here samson grabbed himself two goals one of which was a penalty in a, a game that was absolutely incredible we came out with a 2-1 win against nodtown csc the league leaders which then put them down to third in the league because of that then we played Sparta Parkdale a crucial game we were on the same points he was one sp uh, one spot above me just with slightly better goal difference and then we went back to our normal ways we lost 3-1 Samson getting himself his fifth goal in three games he was on absolute fire uh, back then but it was a shame but it brought us back down to earth and we realized we weren't quite at the stage that we wanted to be until we played at FC Charlemagne now they were again, I think these were one point above me, yeah, and only a few places above. So another important game for us, and pretty much the same team as we played for the games before. Not many changes to it whatsoever. We went into the game, and yeah, we came out with a one-all draw. I mean, I can't really complain. Johnson got himself another goal. He's been playing absolutely amazingly recently. And Jesus, my cats are chucking themselves about in the tunnel. Jesus, they have this tunnel and they just chuck themselves in. But anyway, we drew one all in that game. Can't really complain about it. It wasn't our best game. It wasn't our worst game. So we went on to the next match, which was against FC Real Kidderminster. Now, these were 17th when we played them as well. 
and not really going to say much about it. Embarrassing. 20 shots, only 7 on target. Their keeper got in the team of the round for his performance. Absolutely mental keeper, really. Incredible player, but with an inactive team, because Kidderminster haven't uh, come online for ages, but they beat us 1-0. So then we went into the next game. This was crucial. MGFC had, I think, has two points more than us when we played them. The l teams around us were literally, I think, from 6th, to about 11th or 12th, there were only about 5 points, so each game was absolutely crucial. Now, there was a lot of hype around this game, and MGFC, as you can see, has a very good team, lots of 4 stars in there, and the rest are all 3.5 three, uh, three stars, if they're not a lot better than our team. I mean, we have a 3 star goalkeeper, who is good, Mansoon is a very good keeper, but he's only 3 star, although we did give a debut to a new defender that we signed. Is it called Christmas Longfellow? Now he replaces uh, Hind as our number one right back, and uh, Aiken Nugent also joins, who will probably replace uh, Amir Ishmael as our number one left back. Now these two started in this game for the first time, both on their debut, and it worked. What we did, we won three nil. Norland returned to the team and got two goals, which put him in the team of the round. Sampson got another goal, so he carried on his incredible form for our team so far. Annoyingly, Masoon got injured. He was out for two games, so the next two games, you kind of understand the scores when you see them. But this game, MGFC played amazingly, but we just outclassed him, I think. I think that was pretty much what it was, a good game all round, though, really. Then these two games, I'm going to just click play. So we lost 4-0 against Bad Girl City. They were about fourth in the league. And yeah, we didn't have much in that game. But that's because Richardson have to play. I mean, he's a good keeper, but he's nowhere near the quality that uh, Masoon is. And then 4-0 again. So again, a bit embarrassing. Again, Richardson played absolute rubbish. Geats had an absolute shocker. So did Ludlow, really. It was only really Nugent that had a really good game. So, but yeah, four, two 4-0 four defeats in a row puts us in ninth place in the league. And you can see how close it is here. So, one point above is Charlemagne. We're on the same points as Harlow Spurs. Three points behind, uh, no, sorry, one point behind us is MGFC, and three points behind him is Haro RSC. The Bacon Destructors are only five points behind us, so two defeats and two wins to them, and we could be in the relegation play uh, playoffs here. So it is so close around us. So, however, our next game is crucial, is the Bacon Destructors. So if they win, they're two points behind us. And when you look at the other teams around us, NGFC plays Malvern Town, who we played last time. They're in third. Har uh, Harrow Spurs plays Nottana CFC. They are in fourth. And SC Charlemagne plays Harrow RSC, who are just below MGFC in twelfth. So pretty much crucial games here coming up. Nine games down and plenty more still to come in this 31 match special episode. We next have three rounds of six games on the YouTube Friendly League V2. So 18 games to get through here. So we'll start off in the first round where we had Dewsbury Moor FC against Racing Club Allerdale. Both, uh, well, Racing Club aren't a new team, but as you can see, he's been downgrading his team a lot to fun for youth players. Whereas Dewsbury Moor's a new team who's got a pretty good squad going at the time of this game. And being honest, pretty boring game. Daniel Duffy scored for Dewsbury Moor. Pretty average game. Lots of shots to Dewsbury, but how we only scored one goal, I don't know. A bit embarrassing, really, to go there, have 17 shots, 8 on target, and get one goal. So then we go on to the next game, which is AC Simon Reds United against Swanley Shooters. This, if you remember back to the first YouTube Friendly League, was a killer game between the top two in the league. Swanley Shooters ended up win, uh, winning the first YouTube Friendly League and also got promoted that season. And AC Simon Reigns United ended up finishing in second place. This time, not as interesting a game as you'd expect. 1-0 win to Sirens. He got a bit of revenge. And he even had a player sent off with about 20 minutes left of the game. But still... Swanley shooters couldn't get the winning or even drawing goal in that game. So, pretty average game there again in the first round. 
Then we look at my game against Mansfield Outlaws. Now, Mansfield is a very new team on Trey for Magic. He's got some good players actually in there. He's even got a four-star goalkeeper in his team. But as for his team himself, it's not been funded that long. It was made on Christmas Eve, so he's only been around three months. He's got a pretty good team to say that. Our game, I was kind of happy with it. one all draw. Ed Hill scored on his first ever game for us set in a friendly match so good game and yeah we ended up being mid table after that but still there are three more games in the first round fc alpha play private jokers and that was a 2-0 win to private jokers the team from down under getting them uh, themselves a first win bit lucky though when you look at the shots nine out of ten on target for alpha but didn't manage to score one then we have la galaxy against manchester united are uh, both really original names there, really original, but as you can see, pretty even teams, fairly close to each other, I'd say Manchester had a slightly better team, but they came out with a 2-2 draw, and I think that's pretty fair, like, from two down as well, LA Galaxy managed to score like, two goals, and they had one of my own players, Tony Schofield, score one of those goals, which was good to see, so 2-2 draw there. And then probably the best game of the first round was ADO Richmondshire against Redbridge Rejects. Redbridge last time did okay in the friendly league. ADO is new to our friendly league but has had a team for quite a while. And he managed to start the league perfectly with a 3-2 win. And he was a late scare though with a, uh, a goal on the 80th minute making it 3-2. Then we go into the second round and ADA... Uh, ADO this time had a pretty average game against Racing Club Allardale with it being a one-all draw. Nothing much to say about that. I think ADO again unlucky to not get more because he had over four times as many shots on targets as Racing Club Allardale did. But another good result for him really. I mean that team has been doing well for him even though it's absolutely shocking when you look at the ratings. Then you have Swanley Shooters against myself. This would have been a big game last time out for me and it still was this time I wanted to get a win in uh, to make my first win of the championship and we got that a oh, 2-1 win Samson Honey Badger getting the goals Mansoon got injured but it didn't matter as it was a friendly match and yeah we finally got our first win then you have Redbridge against Sirens and another pretty good game there 2-2 draw not really that bad at all for either of them. I think both would be quite happy. Very even game altogether. Then Manchester United are against FC Alpha. A good game actually when you look at it. 3-1 Man to Man United with Rabek scoring two of his goals. Really, that was, you could kind of guess it would have been that when you look at the shots so and possession stats. Then you have... Private Jokers v Dewsbury Moor. So we went down under for this game. It was an early one, so we found this out before we found out any of the other results. And it's pretty, pretty standard, being honest. Three-two, the game. You'd expect that. And it was, it was one all. Then the red card made it a lot harder with a late goal actually winning it. But it was all Private Jokers really, where you look at the shots. And then finally, the last one from the second round, last game from that was Mansfield Outlaws against LA Galaxy. This would have been a very close game, being honest. Very equal teams, and what a game it was. Did not expect that whatsoever when uh, when we went into the game, especially when you look at the shots. Yes, he had more possession, but he had almost half the amount of shots and about the same on target. So a great game between those two. And their goal coming from another one of my old guys, Thomas Saunders, getting the goal from the penalty spot. So what a game they had there. And then that's set up perfectly for the third round, which has been the best so far, I'd say. FC Alpha v LA Galaxy, pretty average game compared to all the others. One all goal from Abs, a.k.a. Will, uh, Dean Granville. Good player and pretty standard game. How it was only one, though, I don't really know whatsoever. Five times as many shots on target. For LA Galaxy compared to FC Alpha, but good game there, but not the one that you pay much to see. ADOV Private Jokers would be because these two are very close in the league, and it was in the end a 1 0 win for ADO, who stopped Private Jokers 100% record with that first minute goal from Kulowski or Kulikowski, sorry, who got the first minute goal. 
But other than that, not much happened in that game. Pretty equal match again. Then Drewsbury Moor v Man United are two very close teams yet again. Drewsbury's really been improving his team recently and came out of that with a 2-1 loss, which is unfortunate. Daniel Duffy got another goal. He's been an absolute legend for his team more recently, but it was kind of a lucky, very equal game when you look at it. Pretty much the exact same stats, so that was a very close game. Then we have AC Simon Reds United v Racing Club Allardale. Now, RCA, as you know, bad team when you look at the players, but he's funding for a big spending spree and also youth players. Sirens with a lot of four-star players and three-and-a-half stars. And that game, close. 3-1 win to Sirens. Not as close as uh, his previous games Racing Club has had, but 23 shots, 15 on target. Crazy dominance there but a lot closer than you'd expect really so another good game there then we come on to probably the two best games of the friendly league so far swanley shooters v mansfield outlaws swanley has a lot better team majority four star players mansfield has quite a few three and a half star players in his team and one four star but wow what a game there 29 minutes in and a player sent off and then again 61 minutes in a player sent off that's why there was so much dominance for Swanley. Holtra getting four goals in that game as well great performance by this guy absolutely amazing player as well only 21 and he's already that good so probably one of the best games the friendly league has seen so far there but I reckon this was the standout game when you look at the results me versus Redbridge I'd expect it to be a pretty close game when you look at the teams there, but no. Wow. 8-1. You look at his keeper. This is the main reason why he lost, because that keeper is not good. He needs a lot better keeper there, and he had a rubbish game as well. He was only 2-1 down at half-time, but then got a player. He got Gonzalez sent off 60, uh, 60 minutes in. So Samson and Russell had already scored a goal apiece, and then Tigarev made it... 2-1 for half time but then Russell got his second 60 minutes in and then also grabbed himself a hat-trick 85 minutes in Samson managed to get four goals one nine minutes in then 64 77 and 82 and then Ludlow off the bench as well managed to get and not off the bench so he played the whole game but Ludlow got one no, 76 minutes in so a brilliant performance for us and that means now, if we look at the stats, Samson is joint highest top scorer so far with Holger. Russell is also in the top five there. And we have Hill, Flavel, and Ludlow also getting themselves goals. So this means if we look at the friendly league table, we are top at the moment. 11 goals, 3 conceded, 2 wins, a draw, and no defeats. The top four all have that same record so far. Uh, it's mega close at the moment. It's only because of goal difference that we're at the top. Private Jokers have six points. They've done pretty good for themselves. Mansfield on four as our LA Galaxy. Swanley Shooters and Dewsbury make up eighth and ninth with three points. Racing Club Allardale and Redbridge on one. And FC Alpha still yet to get off the mark. But as you've seen, I've put here, there are some crucial games next round. So I reckon out of these games that there are three key ones. Me versus Racing Club Ardell, Private Jokers versus Sirens, and Manchester United v ADO Richmondshire. So that means I play against 10th place, which I'm hoping will be a nice easy win for us. Because our team is a lot better than Racing Club, as I've said, he's funding for the future. So, uh, Manchester United play fourth place, so second versus fourth, and then third versus fifth. So if we win our game against Racing Club Ardale, we'll be on ten points. So we'll either be level at the top if Manchester United or ADO or Sirens win their game. But let's take it that both are a draw. So we know that if, say, Manchester United beat ADO, we'll be level with them, or vice versa, we'll be level with ADO Richmondshire, but if Sirens win, it'll be the same. If Private Jokers win, we'll be a point clear at the top if that ga if the game between Manchester United and ADO uh, ends in a draw. But if both games are a draw, that will leave us two points clear at the top with only seven games to play. So it could 
turn out very good for us after this next round. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait until next episode, guys, to see how we do against probably the worst club in the friendly league. No offence to him. His team is shocking compared to most of the others.